Hi everyone and welcome to my Season 24 Diablo 3 leveling guide. So if you are a veteran, nothing has really changed, but you might want to watch this anyway, just to get a refresher for the most optimal start. 1 to 70 is not really such a big deal these days, because it is quite easy to do, but people want to optimize their time, people don't really want to spend leveling and they want to jump into the endgame as fast as possible. And this is what I'm trying to show you here. So when the new season starts on the 23rd of July, you will jump in yet again with no materials, no paragons, no items, and no characters. So you have to start from scratch and get going. First of all, you want to create your character. So you either rebirth a non-seasonal character or you create a new one on season and create the hero. You can already run the challenge rifts a few minutes before the season starts, but you have to be a bit careful with this. If you kill the boss before the season starts, you will not get the challenge rift cash in the season. So either you play it safe and wait until the official announcement and uh, season 24 is live, or you start a challenge rift but you uh, do it just a few minutes, like two, three minutes before, so that you don't accidentally go too fast, because sometimes there might be some delays. In any case, do not complete the challenge rift because you want to collect this challenge rift, rift cash reward that will give you a lot of blood shards that you need for level one gambling and also crafting a level 70 weapon with reduced level requirement and also some other materials that will help you level your artisans. So the first thing you do is the challenge rift, which I will also have a guide for in the next week before the season starts, but make sure you don't complete it too early. Then you jump in, first of all, you go to your follower. You hire one guy, like the Templar, and you also take the weapon of your choice, depending on which class you're playing, because they are usually better than your own. Then you can also go to the blacksmith and upgrade them to uh, level 12. So you open the letter that you get from the challenge with cash, you collect the materials, you can upgrade your artisans, and you want to craft a few weapons. In the case of a monk, for example, you can do some level 5 axes, and then you can do like a level 10 dagger, just so you have some stuff ready already. At the same time, you can also check the vendors. You always want to check the vendors when you're in town, but don't waste too much time on this. Just go here quickly, buy whatever you see that looks like an upgrade, and you can also sort it out later. But here it's just like, you know, some blue items that will help you get going at the start. Similarly, you can also craft your level 70 reduced level requirement weapon already. So for this, usually you go for something like a two-handed axe. So you craft like two or three of them, and you try to look for one that has a secondary role with a crowd control reduction. For example, this one here, this is actually perfect. It has a 2.4% chance to chill, and there's also knockback, freeze, stun, etc. And uh, here's the second one, actually, that also has stun. So we got quite lucky here, and you want to have one of those, because those CC rolls block most of the other secondary rolls. And you want to hit the reduced level requirement, which has a rather low chance to show up. But because of this, because this chance to chill here blocks all these other rolls, you have a very easy time rolling it and you just need a few attempts. And it's even better if you get life per hit on the weapon because this also blocks life per kill. But you don't want to try to craft too much because you don't have that many materials. So usually two, three, maybe four attempts or so and then you should have one and you don't want to go uh, you know, all in because you also need to reroll them. So then you can start rolling and you can try to get this reduced level requirement which will probably show up quite easily. We got actually very lucky here with minus 29 and now we can wear this weapon at level 41. So this is almost a perfect roll because it goes down to minus 30. Make sure you don't accidentally salvage this weapon so you can put it in your stash. You can also have items that you don't want to auto salvage transmog. There's like a little trick that you can use on PC. So you just put any transmog on it and it will not be part of auto salvage. After this you want to go to Kadala and gamble whatever it is that you want to gamble on your class. So we have a guide here on Maxwell. I also have a video guide explaining this in detail about what to gamble and what to craft for each different class. Because it kind of depends, but typically there are a few good multipliers depending on whatever you're playing. For example, on the Monk, there's good bracers that give you some multipliers. There's good boots, especially the buffed Crudus boots will be very helpful, for example. And for the other classes, similarly, we have everything listed here. So you want to take a look. If you want to look for yourself what you can get at which level, you can also go here to defeepanel.com slash kadala and it will open up the item table and you can, for example, select a class and select a level and this is all the different results that you can get at this level. So you can also look for yourself in case you want to do some kind of specific setup 
and you see it here. So in my case, I will go for some boots and we actually got really lucky here with Kuru's boots on the first attempt. So now we have something like 400 blood shards left and for the monk, I could wait a little bit and go for Bindings of the Lesser Gods at level 17 to get the combo for Mystic Ally. So this will be pretty good. So in some cases you get quite lucky. One item that is useful on every single class is the Pox Falls. You can also get those as the only pair of pants at level 1 for all classes. So you can try to get those and they will also be quite useful. You can just stick them in a the cube, they do 500% weapon damage all the time. It's not really that crazy for something like a Necromancer because they have Grasp of the Essence as the gloves, which are extremely good. But for most other classes, definitely a neat item that you can go for as well. God damn it, I think I just spent all my seasonal luck here. Now you're ready to go to Act 3, Runes of Zacharon, to get your Kanai's Cube. This will not be unlocked in its first season, so you have to go through this entire zone and then the Elder Sanctum to unlock the Kanai's Cube. You have to get to the end of this second level. And you usually want to do this on hard difficulty. On some classes, maybe if you get lucky early, you might be fine with master difficulty. But you definitely want to make sure that you get uh, e a good kill speed and you easily keep up your massacre bonuses. So something like this kill speed here is alright. And you want to try to keep the massacre bonus rolling. Can be quite difficult on some of the melee classes, but when you're playing like a necromancer or demon hunter or something like this, it will usually be fine. And even as a melee, you can try to keep it going a bit here. Most importantly, make sure that you don't really try too hard to kill something. You don't want to struggle your way there. You just want to, you know, slowly progress through, kill some enemies on the way, get a massacre going. And then maybe at the end of the Elder Sanctum, you're going to be something like level 8 to level 12, depending on how much you kill and how well you keep your massacres. Also, don't forget that when you level up, you equip the items that you have crafted at level 1. When you find any upgrades, then just take a quick glance, equip them and don't worry too much about it because every few levels you will essentially replace most of your gear anyway, so nothing is really gonna stick and you don't have to worry too much about getting the perfect roll in, in a slot or anything like this and uh, just you know, take a glance, equip it or not. Now when you have acquired the Kanai's Cube, you can go to a blacksmith and craft a level 70 weapon again that you can try to upgrade into a good legendary and stick it in the cube. Now for the monk this would be a Daibo and for most other classes it's gonna be some kind of class weapon that has a strong legendary power or the potential for one. Some classes have it easier than others, for example Necromancer is really nice here to have uh, basically only good results and then there are some classes where it's kind of like hit and miss with some good some bad and you just have to see what you get. In my case I got nothing this is a weapon that I can't even cube, so it just goes to the stash and that's it and it might be useful at level 70. But in any case, you could stick in the other items like the Pox Falls or the Cruise Boots or whatever else you got for your class and you can cube those because this will allow you to wear other items that you find later on that have better stats and you will have enough materials to cube stuff. Now from this point onwards, you have to choose your leveling strategy. Some people like to just run Nephilim Rifts this is usually not really a good strat and this is actually considered the worst strategy but it is also the most simple and probably the most fun because you just go in, you kill stuff, you have 100% extra legendary drops here especially in season 24 you will maybe find an inferior or two while leveling and uh, it will be a bit more exciting because you might get some nice items on the way. But typically you don't really find a lot of legendary items to begin with so even if this rate is doubled in Nephilim Rifts you will probably only see a handful or so in the whole leveling process. But the overall process is much slower because of the missing massacre bonuses. What is a really great zone for massacre bonuses is the Temple of the Firstborn in Act 2. So every class, especially solo, you want to go here usually and do massacre bonuses because you have lots of these little bugs here that give you a big massacre bonus every time. And it's a quite straightforward layout. It has kind of predictable monsters and nothing really crazy going on here. And there's a very high ch chance for a nice cursed chest event that can boost your massacre bonuses even higher. I have uploaded some runs from Temple of the Firstborn myself where I have gotten like 600 plus massacres. So you can do really insane bursts of XP here when you get a good run. And especially later on when, when you're a bit more mobile, when you know the layout and you get like a nice uh, run, you can get some insane level jumps all at once. Alternatives to this zone are Eternal Woods. This is in Act 3. In Ruins of Sacheron, you go to the other exit on the right. And also Fears of Misery is something that some people like to do. 
especially when you have like a rather strong build and something that survives those moon clan guys easily you can uh, just go there i think especially witch doctors like to solo level here because they have a rather large zone and it's a quite straightforward like oval shape layout where you just go like two little circles and that's about it another strategy that's especially good in groups is curse chest leveling because in groups you'll have up to four people going new game and essentially every time you do that with four people you will find a curse chest event one of those lists so you can check the bounties especially act one act two and act three and there's also one the curse speed in act five and if you get any of those you can call your group mates to you and you can already start running there and then you teleport in with the whole party and you obliterate the curse chest and you go next game this is a strategy that is usually used on uh, necromancer groups so usually they have a very easy time on this because they have very great synergy with grass of essence corpse explosion they have very high damage and can do this all the way up to torment 6 if they get a nice weapon from the upgrade rare in solo this is not really such a good strat but in groups that's definitely the way to go especially with something like strong necromancers in the party because you can obliterate these cursed chests and get insane xp from that and the fastest groups to reach 1 to 70 is something like 45 minutes with a strategy the massacre bonuses in solo depends a bit on the rng and the class and how well you play especially massacre bonuses are really big and if you don't keep them up well you will really slow down your progression but if you are good and especially with a ranged class you will be able to keep them more easily and if you like, have very high mobility and in that case you can expect times between one hour to two hours depending on rng and gameplay and for nephilim rifts you can definitely expect a time of upwards of two hours in most cases unless you get extremely lucky with your drops and you obliterate like torment 5 or torment 6 all the time there is one last strategy and that's the halls of agony blades leveling so you go to halls of agony level one and you have to find the exit that leads to level two and there are the blades that you can use to kill enemies on torment 6 without doing damage yourself this strategy is usually used especially in groups when you have only classes that are not particularly strong at the start for example if you level with a lot of demon hunters in a group and maybe a barb or so you will probably be better off just doing this strategy because you get pretty good xp from doing these torment 6 kills with the blades even though you don't really kill a lot especially if you explore with multiple people going different ways and also maybe someone trying to go back from level 2 to find a level 1 you will find these blades quite quickly and then you can just lure enemies in there slow them in the tra and, and trap them or immobilize them and they will die automatically from usually one or two hits so here i found them and this is what it looks like you just try to kite these enemies in there make sure you don't stand under them yourself because you will also get one shot and this is how you do it there are these zombie pits here where more stuff is coming out be aware of those little uh, torsos coming out from those hungry corpses because they can slap you and one shot you and this is how you do it these blades are always at the exit from level one to level two so if you continue a little bit further here you'll see that the exit is around here now with all those leveling methods covered you also want to make sure that your own character is set up properly so you want to use skills that you either have a big multiplier for for example from upgrading this weapon in the kind of cube or maybe whatever you've gambled so in my case here i got the coolest boots and mystic ally is already a really nice skill and with the upcoming patch this is going to be massive if you get those boots so whatever you gambled you want to try to make use of it or maybe whatever you'll find you will find you know probably a few legendaries you might find an ethereal that has a really strong power so you want to use those and not necessarily stick to like a skill that doesn't really get any bonuses because of the huge list of items that you could potentially get this is nothing that you can really say in advance about what you want to use but there are a few skills per each class that work really well in general so as long as you get no specific multipliers for any skills you might want to use one of those as your main dps and then otherwise try to fill it up with some utility skills like mobility like uh, immunities or defensive skills especially in groups you might want to synergize a bit with some buffs for your party as well because all that can really help you out the difficulty you want to aim for is always something where you can comfortably one or two short most trash enemies and you don't really want to fight elites for a long time so you want to make sure you don't die because you'll lose your massacre bonuses or you might lose time on the cursed chest uh, only on the horse agony strategy you will go torment 6 all the way 
but otherwise you try to go up and down in difficulties depending on what kind of power boost you have gotten recently. For example, now that I have this insane um, minus level requirement weapon here which, that I can use at level 41, I would definitely go in there at level 41 and go torment 6 because you will one shot everything all the way to like level 55 or something from that point on. And then you go down to torment 5, to torment 4, just depending on how it feels. And then after level 60, this is when the Reaper of Zoul scaling comes in and you're not really going to do that much damage anymore. So this is where you usually go down uh, almost every level in difficulty. So you go down to like Torment 2, Torment 1, Master. So it all comes down to how strong you feel, how well you survive. So make sure you don't really just run into monsters and uh, get killed on the higher difficulties because you usually don't have much defense and you usually don't really have a lot of life recovery. So in essence, offense is the best defense. Now after you've reached level 70, you can go for a few Nephilim Rifts. You will get one key every time at least, even on normal difficulty, so this is quite nice. And then you can go for either the Hades Gift as fast as possible, or you can go for Legacy of Dreams. You'll always get Legacy of Dreams as your second legendary gem after Benjamin Powerful from your second Greater Rift. Especially for Wizards and Necromancers, there's not really much to offer from the Hades Gift this time around, so you might want to do that. But for most of the other classes, you'll probably be fine just going for Hades Gift as fast as possible. So you want to do one boundary run, usually on normal difficulty, just to get it done as fast as possible. Complete the steps in the seasonal journey. This is very easy, the chapter 1, 2, 3 and 4. Uh, you just have to kill a few key wardens, equip your follower and this kind of stuff. And then you have to do a GR20 run. I've already covered it in a video here about how to get your Hades Gift the easiest way with the GR20 run and what kind of setup you want to go for before and after, so go check it out. And we're also gonna have a link here on Maxroll under resources where we have the Hades Gift GR20 guide. So go check them out if you want. This will be updated very soon and this will make sure that you have an easy start. And that's about it for this leveling guide. So I hope that you're gonna have a lot of fun in season 24. I believe it's gonna be one of the coolest seasons yet. The meta is very nice, very diverse. All classes have their spot and we have the cool ethereal items that we're gonna find. Maybe you even find one on your way to level 70 and those are gonna be an insane boost which makes it quite fun so hope you like this video and see you guys next time